I've been selling on Amazon FBA for almost five years. And in my first year selling name brand products, I made over $100,000 in profit. And in this video, I'm gonna go over six things I wish I knew when I got started selling on Amazon to help you save time, money, and avoid costly mistakes. And if you're new here, my name is Miles. I'm a 25 year old seven figure Amazon seller on a mission to help as many of you guys as possible build a side hustle or business of your dreams this year. The first thing I wish I knew when I got started selling on Amazon was the importance of choosing the right business model. When I got started, all I thought you could sell as a beginner was used books. Used books are great, they're cheap, abundant, but it's a really tough business to scale. My business really took off when I switched over to online arbitrage, buying name brand frogs from Kohl's, Walmart, and Target, and flipping them on Amazon for a profit. However, most beginners choose the wrong business model and they waste tons of time and money doing it. They try to get started with complicated stuff like private label, where you buy cheap crap from Alibaba in China and try to create a brand. The problem with private label is you have to create a listing, you have to wait for the product to get here from China, you have to spend a lot of money up front, and then once the product gets here, you have to create a listing, you have to get professional pictures, you have to do copywriting, and you have to spend a bunch of money on ads to get people will actually buy your product. Meanwhile, if you buy a profitable Lego off Kohl's.com that has a proven sales history on Amazon, all you have to do is find winning products and ship them off in bulk to the Amazon warehouse. Online arbitrage is substantially easier than private label as well as substantially easier than wholesale, which is another one of the business models a lot of beginners start with, where they try to cold call and cold email suppliers to buy name brand products in bulk. This is just too expensive and time consuming for beginners who probably aren't prepared to make a bunch of cold calls. Instead, I recommend starting with online arbitrage, which takes a lot less startup capital and is more simple and easy to get started with. Number two is the importance of networking and being active in the Amazon community. The problem with this stuff is there's no formal education about it. That's probably why you're here watching a YouTube video to learn to sell on Amazon. And you probably don't know anyone in your small town or in your city who sells on Amazon themselves. Luckily, there's a thriving community of other Amazon sellers online and it's a ton of fun to network and mastermind with them. I tried selling on Amazon on my own for a while, but once I started documenting my journey on social media, I met and made friends with a ton of sellers. We'll pop it up on the screen here. That I was literally in a guy's wedding like two weeks ago that I met on Instagram, and now we're lifelong friends, and we both made over 100K profit our first year working together. The beautiful thing is this is completely free, and there's super active communities on Instagram and Twitter and different Facebook groups or our free Discord that I'll leave a link to down below where you can meet and interact with other sellers. And I know some of you guys are thinking, wouldn't that just saturate the market? Well, think about it. If you had a test in school and you were allowed to cheat and you knew if you did cheat, you would get a way better grade, that's the same thing as in business and you can find other sellers to work with even just in the comments of this video and it's going to make your journey a hell of a lot more fun and a lot easier. So far and away, one of the best things I did starting my journey was document my progress on social media, share what I was doing, tell my story, and the algorithms are good and they started showing that content to people who vibe with me, they liked what I was doing, and people started helping me for free like crazy and that made the journey a lot easier. Number three, so when I was new, people were always saying retail arbitrage is scalable or merchant of fulfilling products takes too much time. And that really showed me the benefits of scaling the unscalable. Doing retail arbitrage takes more time than all in arbitrage, but there's tons of gems in your local Nike outlet or Puma outlet or grocery outlet that you can go out and source. And sure, it takes a little bit more time than all in arbitrage, but it does have higher profit margins as well. So don't sleep on retail arbitrage. It's a lot more simple than online arbitrage too. Luckily, you can do both. But when I was getting going, a lot of people were saying retail arbitrage isn't worth the time. And then I started going to my Nike out and I started to find a lot of products a lot easier. On top of retail arbitrage, merchant fulfilling, which is actually different than Amazon FBA, is a massive hack for beginners. If you wanna sell a product on Amazon FBA, you have to ship it off in bulk to the Amazon warehouse, which works phenomenal. Being able to sell products with the Amazon Prime badge on your store and get it to customers a lot quicker, sell products at higher prices, but especially during back to school, which is coming up, or the fourth quarter in October, November, December, there's tons of opportunity to make a bunch of money selling products merchant fulfilled as well. The main benefits of merchant fulfilled is that you can sell the product a lot quicker so you can make money quicker. And as a new seller, you also learn a lot quicker. If you want to FBA something, it's going to take a week or two for it to check into Amazon. Meanwhile, if you're doing merchant fulfilled and say you find a good backpack for back to school, you get it, order it in from Kohl's, and then you can list it same day and potentially learn and make money a hell of a lot quicker. 
So don't sleep on doing Merchant Fulfilled and definitely don't sleep on retail arbitrage as well, especially during big seasonal opportunities. During back to school a couple years, which was actually my first back to school, I did like 100K in revenue with two weeks, doing a lot of retail arbitrage straight to Merchant Fulfilled, getting products listed insanely quick. Number four is gonna be the power of outsourcing and delegation. If you wanna grow your business to the moon, you can't do everything yourself. Two of the great things you can do to delegate in your business is hire virtual assistants or get a prep center or both. Virtual assistants are awesome employees you can hire in countries like the Philippines and India or Morocco where your US dollar goes a lot further. You can get really good employees for like four to six bucks an hour to do things like customer service, product research, or bookkeeping for your business. I'd recommend looking into this once you do like 20 to 30K a month in sales or sooner depending on if you're busy with family or a nine to five job and want to free up some of that time. It's truly ridiculous the arbitrage you can get with overseas talent now, and I would highly recommend looking into getting a virtual assistant. My favorite place to hire virtual assistants is onlinejobs.ph, which is a phenomenal place you can make a job posting and there'll be tons of qualified applicants on it. A pro tip I have for virtual assistants is to hire two of them at the same time on a week long paid trial. So you can pair the two of them and figure out who's a better fit for your business. You do have to really be prepared to manage them because if you can't do product research yourself, how are you gonna help someone do product research in your own business? On top of virtual assistants, hiring a prep center is a great idea as well. A prep center is a third party warehousing service that'll actually receive your inventory for you and have limited access to your seller account to ship the product off in bulk to Amazon for you. They handle the intake, they'll handle having the warehouse, they'll handle listing the product for you, and it's a really good resource to save up a ton of time so you don't have to be labeling and stickering products forever. Typical prep center cost is between $1 and $2 per unit, and I'd recommend getting a prep center in a sales tax-free state like Oregon, Delaware, New Hampshire, or Montana. I personally use a prep center in New Hampshire as well as a prep center in PA that was actually started up by one of my friends because certain products are sales tax-free in my home state of PA, even though I'm down here in Florida running it up now. Number five, this is by far one of the most important things I wish I knew, and it's, and it's a massive mistake I see way too many beginners making. And that's the idea that you don't find items profitable, you make them profitable with online arbitrage sourcing. Very rarely is something just gonna be sitting for $10 on walmart.com that sells for 30 on Amazon that you make eight bucks a piece profit on. Typically, what purchases look like is it's $40 on Amazon, but it retails for 24, but you find a 25% off coupon code that you get for putting in an email address and now that item becomes cheaper and it becomes profitable. So if you're a beginner, I really need you to understand that you don't find items good, you make them good using all the discounting methods I'm gonna share with you right now. Make sure you take notes and actually implement these. Number one is evergreen coupon codes. These typically come in the form of email, text, and account sign-up codes. If you want an example of that, go to dicksportinggoods.com, scroll to the bottom of your screen and you'll see a 10% email sign-up coupon right there. All you have to do is put in your email. Each time you put in your email, you get a 10 percent coupon that can be the difference between some items being profitable and not being profitable another really good way is utilizing all the free cash back and coupon extensions to get fed additional coupons i'd recommend having these six they're completely free capital one shopping top cash back coupon birds be frugal rackets in and retail me not all you have to do when you go to a website they'll pop up on your chrome screen and show you different deals that are going on number three is going to be hidden coupon codes these are typically found just asking customer service it's crazy how few people do that but customer service will plug you in on new coupons sometimes and i've also learned a ton of coupons just networking and talking to my boys that i met in the amazon community as well the more connected you are the more opportunity you get another one is going to be taking advantage of holiday sales coming up there's mother's day memorial day Father's Day, as well as 4th of July and July Prime Day. Every time there's a big holiday going on, a lot of suppliers run deals and you need to be prepared for that. On top of the different couponing methods and holiday sales, there's also discounted gift cards you can buy from Card Bear and Top Cashback. If you can buy a discounted gift card that gives you $100 of value for $91, you make an extra $9 profit and you pay less than your competition, which means more items are profitable for you and aren't profitable for them, and that's how you grow your business. And the magic is unlocked, guys, when you combine these different methods. A lot of my purchases for my own business these days require multiple of these discounting methods, and that's why so many items are profitable for me that aren't profitable for other sellers. And I'm sure it can be a little bit confusing when you're a new seller. However, over time, it becomes second nature. And then put this before that, 
And another way to do it is using rewards programs like Kohl's Cash and Dick's Sporting Goods and Rack Room Rewards. It's really important to note guys, even for big seven figure sellers like myself, we're buying from the same websites as everyone else. We just know how to get procs cheaper using the discounting methods I just mentioned. Coupon codes, holiday sales, discounted gift cards, rewards programs, so on and so forth. And the sixth thing I wish I knew when I was starting my Amazon business was the power of staying organized. What does this actually consist of? A major thing you need to do as a beginner is track leads and track your replens, building a database of leads using the Selleramp Google Sheets feature. Say you find an item that's not profitable today, but it's pretty close, or an item that is profitable, it's just out of stock. All you have to do is one-click export those to a Selleramp spreadsheet, and you can also set tracking alerts with the Keepa Product Research software you guys see me use in my other videos that's gonna notify you when an item becomes profitable. So the Selleramp Google Sheets feature and Keep alerts are really helpful, as well as making sure you're staying on top of your accounting and tracking your orders. I recommend using Google Sheets to track all your orders, make sure the retailers are giving you as much as you need, making sure you're actually getting the products listed. The same goes if you're using a prep center, you wanna make sure they're on top of everything and make sure your virtual assistants are doing what they need to be doing to grow your business as well once it's time to hire a prep center or VAs. You also wanna make sure that you're selling items profitable and repricing correctly. That's another massive mistake I see lots of beginners making. I have a tutorial on getting started with the repricer as well. All you have to do is search full smiles repricer on YouTube. I'd recommend getting a repricer set up once you have 10 plus ASINs. And those are the six things I wish I knew when I was getting started selling on Amazon. You need to make sure you choose the right business model. Getting active and networking in the community is insanely helpful. Taking advantage of retail arbitrage and FBM, even if other sellers say they aren't scalable. The power of delegation to prep centers and virtual assistants. And understanding you don't find items good, you make them good, and of course, staying organized as well. If you guys are looking to get further help with stuff, I have something for you. If you're interested in personalized, direct one-on-one -on -one access to myself, and you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, learning all my favorite coupons, tips, tricks, and strategies, you wanna be around other sellers that are crushing the game with three group coaching calls a week, and you wanna get on a one-on-one -on -one live sourcing call with myself for an hour, and you overall just wanna be plugged into the right way to sell on Amazon in 2024, we'll pop up a bunch of my coaching program results on the screen right now. Now is a perfect time with back to school and eventually Q4 approaching. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description. You can check out my coaching program website where you can apply to work directly with me and get personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching to grow your Amazon business in 2024. So take a look at that down below at the link in the description. And if you want more free content, you can check out my full ungating tutorial right here. That was another thing I wish I knew when I got started and my full free course right here. Make sure to subscribe. Let me know any questions down below in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.